big old pile behind us is called Batch Acre Hall and uh, judging by the architecture of it, it looks like it goes way back maybe to the 16th century maybe before uh, with additions on but it's in a right old dilapidated state now isn't it people yeah. are obviously still living in there but a lot of the windows are just boarded up with wood it was obviously a, a big grand house at some point not farm it's not a farmhouse it was obviously a big manor house at some point by the landowner you know who owned all this land but now I guess it's owned by the farmer who can't afford to keep it going. It's yeah. such a shame. Still a beautiful walk, beautiful countryside. And these horses are so friendly behind us. We just had a bit of a cuddle, or I did. With the horses, that is. Yeah. <laughs> really large old farmhouse called Batchacre Hall. It's lovely, isn't it, Fran? It is lovely. And look at all those potatoes in the back of there. Oh, yeah. Isn't it an ancient peasant right that if you find potatoes laying on the ground you can pocket them? Well, you try and uh, see how far you gleaning, get. Gleaning, isn't it? It's from harvested fields, isn't it? Gleaning. When they've harvested a field, you can go and pick up stuff that's left behind. Oh, really? I don't know if you're if that's an official thing, but it's the word gleaning. Yeah. So he says that that's the way we're supposed to go. Yeah. Oh, so that. as you can see. They we're supposed to walk where that mound of uh, old potatoes is. So no way you can get your way through there. But still interesting though, isn't it? Coming on a farm every now and again, you don't often see in the farm workings. Cows in their shed. Look, no one's going to use them. They're all going to go to waste. <laughs> That's enough for a year for us there. Huh? That's enough potatoes for a year on the floor A there. year? Well, not not two there. years more like. <laughs> you like your chips though, don't I you? I do like <laughs> chips. Who doesn't? What's not, lo what's not to like? So that was uh, easy going so far, Fran. Yeah, all the fun is still to come. Yeah, here we go. Lovely. Oh. How's it going, Fran?
We've woken up this morning to this absolutely beautiful October morning. The colours are stunning, the sun's shining and it's fantastic. Yesterday when we moored up at the final point of our journey on the Shropshire Union Canal, it was dark, drizzly, murky, cold and we just stopped to put the fire on. We've actually turned the boat at a winding hole and moored up immediately, ready to start heading back all the areas that we've been to over the last four weeks without filming. So we're going to go back and record all the lovely things we've seen. But this morning we've just abandoned the washing up, abandoned the boat, because when it's like this, you just need to get out and enjoy it. Um, the washing up can wait till whenever. <laughs> So we thought we'd just take you on a little walk um, just along the towpath and show you these glorious autumn colours. So come along with us. Oh, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> First foraging find of the day, a bit of alliteration there, shaggy ink caps. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. And they're unmistakable. I've eaten them loads in the past, but I can't convince Rich. He just thinks I'm an old witch that's going to poison him. So, wouldn't be the first. They are a bit ragged looking actually, but there's another baby coming up behind. No, that's, they're all right, they're lovely. Um, I think I have to get some um, YouTube footage up or some evidence that they're edible and see if I can convince him, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> they're lovely and they're not mis you can't mistake them for any other mushroom, they're quite safe. <sighs> So I'm off for a sunny Sunday morning walk alone or with Archie because Rich has pulled a muscle doing his, uh, in his back doing the washing up this morning, believe it or not. So I've come out just to explore the um, outskirts of Brood and have a look around and maybe take you into the town in a little while. If Rich isn't better, I'll go on my own. There's such a huge long history for Brood. It goes back to Roman times and one of the bridges further along, which we'll show you when we're cruising, is Watling Street, which was the Roman road, which is a huge Roman road. And actually our cottage that we owned was on the same road a long way away. Uh, one of the main areas of, of the main buildings in this area was Chillingdon Hall, which was owned by the Gifford family. It was given to them, or the estate was given to them by William the Conqueror when he invaded. And if you can see this bridge behind me, um, this obviously crosses the canal, but one of the conditions of uh, the canal coming through many of these big estates was that they would build ornamental bridges or ornate bridges because this was obviously all the parkland for Chillington Hall. So I think I can go up there. It does eventually go all the way to Chillington Hall, but um, that's not open to the public at the moment because of the current situation. But we'll have a little walk up and just see what the path looks like up above. Well, I found these on my walk, which are sweet chestnut shells. 
And here's one. I've been looking out for them. Let's see if I can find some for roasting, but um, that's not much good. So I can't find the tree. I'll keep looking. I've eventually found my chestnut tree and the ground is covered with the husks from them but I don't know I'm not having much luck they're empty and when I do find some they're about that big not much good for roasting I'll keep looking but it's looking like skin picking So back at the boat with one muddy poured dog. Um, this has been our mooring spot last night and today and it's lovely but as you can see quite overgrown we're in a cutting which means it's been very very dark the internet's not been good and today the clocks have gone back so I think we might move on to try and find a biter spot. The good thing is that there's kindling wood everywhere so I'm going to break loads of this up stack it in the boat to save us buying plastic wrapped kindling. We've had a little walk into Brood. We were going to film all around the town today but as you can see it's pouring of rain. But we're coming to see the butcher and the greengrocer. I'm going to ask him if he'll let us do a little bit of filming inside and just so, show you what's there. It looks gorgeous. Then we'll come back tomorrow and in nice weather film the rest of the town, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully it'll be nice weather tomorrow, but uh, so unpredictable. Are you approved then, Fran? Uh, yeah, this is the greengrocery side of the shop, obviously, and it says that a lot of it is local produce and the potatoes are local. I hope you can hear me, because oh, you can't see my lips. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to stock up with fresh stuff. And it's a tiny village, and how fantastic. You've still got a shop like this here. But yeah, brilliant. Buds with muck on. <laughs> it's just so lovely to see shops like this still surviving and we've managed to get everything except the eggs with no plastic involved unfortunately the local eggs which in the next village have come in plastic boxes but we couldn't do anything about that they're even selling pots of homemade brood which is the town stew in there just lovely <laughs> Thank you.
that's a camper van. Connoisseurs of 1960s popular music will well remember the heinous crime that is Herman's Hermits singing Ennery the Eighth I Am I Am and uh, unfortunately for me <laughs> and me yeah, that's what I woke up with this morning in my head and uh, I've managed to pass it on to Fran there it's been singing it ever since all the way along the canal even when I was walking the dogs all I could hear was I've been oh is it oh, I'm married the eighth I am. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, if you go on YouTube, you can see them playing it on the Ed Sullivan Show, 1966. They made up for it the next year, though, with a song called A Kind of Hush. And that's been another earworm <laughs> as well. I think I'm going to try and retaliate. I'm coming back to you with um, Wichita Lineman. Oh, no, that's a good song. Yeah, that's a nicer earworm. <laughs> so we've been on the go really early for us today we're on the move by nine o'clock yes and uh, it's been a gorgeous gorgeous morning yeah we left a little village called Wheaton Aston nothing much to report but yesterday we had a visitor yes we had our friend Richard Vobes the bald explorer come to visit us again and uh, with his new um, it's not a camper van, but it's a new van that he can stay in overnight when yeah. he's out exploring. He's got a bed in the van. So he came uh, to spend the day and the evening with us and then went back to his van to try it out and sleep. Yeah. Yeah, so it was cold last night, wasn't it? It was a cold night last night. But we got up this morning. There wasn't much at um, Wheaton Aston. We just sort of walked around a little bit. Um, but we're going back now to Nozal. And it's really nice because we shot down this canal quite quickly really without filming and without exploring places but we sort of know where the mooring spots are now don't we yeah. uh, so we know that there's a, a good spot to moor up at Nozal and we can do a little bit of exploring there for a day can't we the, the leaves on the trees are just fantastic colors this year <laughs> we were just talking about it i think we missed out last year because we were in scotland for a week on honeymoon and the, the leaves had all but gone hadn't they yeah. and then we were heading into Manchester so we missed quite a bit of the glorious countryside and the, the first year on board at this time of year we were heading into London so for two years in sort of November running up to Christmas we were heading into big cities and it feels odd now that we're out in the countryside it sort of seems like it's that a little bit of a routine that I expect as soon as weather's like this we're heading into industrial areas but we're not, we're staying quiet and out of the way of everything. <laughs> well, the leaves falling on the water are giving us headaches with the uh, motion of the uh, boat. They're getting caught round the propeller. And so we have to, every sort of 15 minutes, stop the boat, put it in reverse to clear the prop and then go forward again. It's not just that we, uh, we're going too slowly. We lose the steering as well, don't we, when we're going that slowly? Yeah. So. So that's it, we've got the new podcast coming out today, uh, which features our friend Richard Bobes. Um and that's about it, isn't it? Really? It is, yeah. What yeah. did we do at the weekend? And you, oh yeah, you went away, didn't you, for the weekend? Last weekend went away to visit family, um, and that was interesting because I was away just as the new restrictions came into play. and. Um, the area that I went to, London, and London and Essex were put up a grade in the lockdown and I couldn't do the things I wanted to do, I was supposed to be staying with my sister and I couldn't, but yeah, it was uh, just nice to do something different, but even nicer to get back on the boat again. And you missed me like crazy, didn't you? He did. <laughs> my, night was, my night was all right on my own, but... Uh, I think he was actually quite looking forward to it, weren't you? I, I you was were looking just... forward to a bit of me time. Because I'm so, I'm such a demon and such an overbearing dragon. <laughs> it was nice. But uh, he did miss me. I got bored after a day. Yeah. So that's about it, I think, isn't it, really? Yeah, there's uh, a bridge coming up and there's a boat equidistant from us, near the side of the bridge, so I've just uh, waved them on. It always happens. I think this is only the second boat we've passed today, but it always happens at a bridge, doesn't it? Always. 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 
nearly always. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time 